Hello, welcome to chapter two. So we're doing 2.1 today, intro, introduction to segments. So there's an exploration here if you wanna take a moment to go try that out. And then you can come back and finish the video. All right, so the segment addition postulate. So if point B is between A and C, then let's go ahead and draw that out real quick. So I have three points and point B is in between A and C. So if this is, if this is what we have, then AB plus BC will give us AC. So this is, this is true by the segment addition postulate. So let's go ahead and try a few examples down here. So I want to find EF. So I'm going to start with the letters. So I know that if I take ED, so this part of the segment, and add it to DF, this part over here, then it's going to equal the entire thing. So EF, the whole line. So I have one part plus the other part will give me the whole thing. And so my goal is to find EF. So I know that ED is 17 and DF is 4. And so that will give me whatever EF equals. So 21. So EF equals 21. Okay, let's go ahead and look at number 2. So this time we're trying to find AB. I'm going to set it up the same way. So I have AB, part of the segment, plus BC, the other part of the segment, equals the entire segment. So I'm going to take the individual parts and set those, um, what I know. So I'm trying to find AB, so I'm going to go ahead and leave that as AB. BC, it tells me that that length is 5, and then it tells me the whole whole line, so AC is 9. So now I just have to use some algebra to solve for the segment. So AB equals 4. Okay, let's look at 3. So 3 wants us to find AB, so here, and CD over here. So we have a lot of information that we can kind of work with. Let's go ahead and start with trying to find AB. So we need to find AB. I know that's going to be in my statement. I want to add it to something. Um, let's see. So we have AB here. That's what we're trying to find. And then if we look right here, 36, that gives us B to D. So I can say BD. And that's going to give me my entire line, which is A, D. So I have A to B plus B to D will give me A to D. All right, so trying to find A, B. We know that B, D is 36. And then we also know that the entire line is 54. So A, D equals 54. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 36 from both sides. And I'll have AB equals 18. All right, so we have now found one part. I'm going to go ahead and write that this is 18 right there. Now we also want to find CD, so that's the last part over there. So addition, um, segment addition postulate. We can take that for multiple segments. So I can also write this as AB plus BC plus CD will give me AD. So I took each part of my segment, added them all together, and it gives me the whole thing. So we just found AB is 18. BC is 20. And we're trying to find CD. And then AD is 54. All right, so I can go ahead and add these two terms together. So now I have 38 
plus C D equals 54. So now I'm going to go ahead and subtract 38 from both sides and CD equals 16. All right, so now that you've seen these three problems, take a second, pause the video, and try number four and five. All right, here is four and five. So go ahead, take a look at those. Take a look at how they were done. If you need to pause the video and take a look at that, you may do so. All right, next page. So find, we want to find the value the variable of each problem, so 6 through 10. So we want to find x if ac equals 30. So this whole line equals 30. So we're still taking ab and adding it with bc to get the entire line, which is ac. So 2x minus 4 plus 3x plus 2 equals 30. So we'll go ahead and combine our like terms. So we have 5x and then minus 2 equals 30. I'm going to move this over here. We'll go ahead and add 2 to both sides. So now we have 5x equals 32. And then when we divide by 5, I can just leave it as this fraction, 32 over 5. Okay, seven. So given that X is between Y and Z, so let's go ahead and, so given that X is between Y and Z, X, Y equals four A plus two, X, Z equals seven A minus 10, and Y, Z equals nine A minus 19. Then find A. So draw and label a diagram is our hint. So whenever you do not have a diagram, it's a really good idea to draw one. So taking this first part, given that X is between Y and Z, I'm gonna go ahead and start there. So, uh, X is between Y and Z. We know that X, Y is 4A plus two. And then we know that X, Z is 7A minus 10. And then the whole thing, y to z, is 9a plus 19. So each part will equal that whole thing. So I'm still going to draw or write my equation 4a plus 2 plus 7a minus 10 will give me 9a plus 19. So I'll go ahead and combine my like terms. So I have 11a minus 8 equals 9a plus 19. Go ahead and subtract 9a from both sides. So I have 2a, and then I'm going to add both 8 to both sides to give me 27. All right, now I'll go ahead and divide by 2. I have A equals 27 over 2. On decimal form, we have 13.5. All right, so now I also want to know how long is segment XY. So I know that XY is 4A plus 2. I just figured out what A is, so I can now plug A into my equation to figure out what x, y equals. So I now have four times 13.5 plus two. So 54 plus two gives me 56. So x, y equals 56. All right, now you gotta try eight and nine. So take a second, pause the video and try eight and nine. 
right, here is eight and nine. Go ahead and pause it if you need to and check out those answers. All right, congruent segments. If two segments are congruent, then they have the same, oops, let's rewrite that, same length. Let's draw a picture over here. If I have A, B, and C, and I say that A, B is congruent to B, C, that means this line is congruent to that line. And that's how we kind of show that two things are congruent. We take a little dash and we draw it through those two lines. Me seeing that both of these lines have that straight line through it tells me that AB is in fact congruent to BC. So if I were to use some numbers, if I said AB is five, then BC also needs to be five as well. So given the diagram below, where AB is congruent to CD and AD is 15, then find the lengths of AB and BD. So the first thing we need to do is label our diagram with what we know. So we know that AB is congruent to CD. So I'm gonna draw my line through both of those parts to show that they are the exact same. And then the last part, AD equals 15. So this whole line right here is 15. And I wanna find the lengths of AB and BD. So first we need to figure out what these two lengths are of these two parts of our line in order to figure that out. So since I know that they're the same, I can label them the same variable because they both equal each other. I don't know what that is right now, but I do know that they equal each other. So they, I can label them both x. So I know that if I take x plus 3 plus x will give me 15. So AB plus BC plus CD gives me AD. So I can combine my like terms. 2x plus 3 equals 15. Subtract my 3 from both sides. 2x equals 12. Divide by 2. So x equals 6. So it wants us to find AB. Alright. Yep. AB. So AB is x. So AB equals 6. It also wants us to find BD. So BD is BC plus CD. So I'm going to add both of those values together. So BC is 3, and I just found CD to be 6. So therefore, BD equals 9. All right, let's go ahead and flip to the next page. So points of intersection, if two lines intersect, then the point they intersect at is called the point of intersection. So I have these two points here. That would be my point of intersection. I can label that A. So A is my point of intersection. All right, collinear. So if two or more points are on the same line, even if the line is not drawn, then the points are collinear. So if I have a line here, I can label this A and B. So both these points are collinear. And then I can write a draw a line or draw a point C here. It is also collinear with B and C. Even though I don't have a line drawn, I could draw a line through each of these, showing me that they do, in fact, make a line. Okay, so we want to use the diagram below for these questions. So, 11, what is the point of intersection for AC and ED? So, it's where they intersect. So, this is going to be point B. Name a point that is collinear with B and E. So, if I went along this line for B and E, I need to figure out what else, it's a little bigger. 
So I need to figure out what other point also lies on that line. So I can see that D, as I follow that line, also falls on there. Okay, our points C, A, and B collinear. So if I take C, B, and A, are they collinear? Yes, they are. They are because I can draw, or I can draw, and there already is, there's a line through all the points. Are points D and A collinear? So even though D and A don't line up on the same line, I can still draw a line through them. So therefore, yes, they are. So since we can draw that line through them, they are indeed collinear. All right, name three points on the diagram that are not collinear. So we can find a whole bunch of points to match this. Um, I chose D, C, and E. So D and C are on the same line, or D and E are on the same line, but C is not. C cannot be on the same line as D and E at the same time. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about this conjecture that any two points are always collinear. So let's go ahead and draw two points. It could be anywhere you want. Are they collinear? So if I were to draw a line to them, can they be on that same line? Yes, they are. Okay, now let's draw two other points. About there and there. Are they collinear? I can draw a line to them, so yes. Do you agree with the conjecture? Yes, I do. Because any two points we draw, I can always draw a line through them, through those two points. Okay, so now let's consider this one. Any set of three points are not always collinear. So let's try and draw three points that are not collinear. So you can really draw them really wherever. I sort of drew this triangle shape. I can't draw a line through all three of those points at the same time. All right, so now we want to try and draw three points that are collinear. So if we draw three points in a straight line, well then yes, all three of those points can be collinear. So do you agree with the conjecture? Yes, because it's not true every single time, but you can have three points that are all collinear. All right, and that's the end of 2.1. If you have any further questions, please feel free to ask your teacher. Have a good day.